Everybody knows who Tua Tungavailoa is. He's both one of the best and most polarizing names in the NFL right now, and going back to his time at Bama, he has always been a big deal. He was a five-star recruit, the future of that program, and his next stop was always going to be in the NFL. Except, what people don't realize is at one point, people thought his little brother Talia would be even better than him. He was on pace to becoming a five-star recruit, was also headed to Alabama, and some said was further along than his brother was at his age. But as we flash forward a few years, Talia Tungavailoa is kind of in an interesting spot. While he did start for four seasons at Maryland, he's one of the more polarizing names in this year's draft class, and to be honest, I don't think he has what it takes to actually make it to the NFL. In today's video, we're going to talk about him. We're going to go through the story of Talia Tungavailoa, talk about his insane college career, and if he really has a chance at making it to the league. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of NFL Draft content, or just college football for that matter, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the harsh truth of Talia Tungavaloa. In order to talk about how Talia got to this point, we first need to go back in time. He was born in the state of Hawaii, just like his older brother Tua was. He was located on the island of Oahu, which is one of the larger islands in Hawaii. Football was part of the family from very early on, as his father was the offensive coordinator at the local high school, and his grandpa played a large part in pushing the two boys into the sport. For the first few years of high school, Talia attended a smaller school in the Honolulu area, and just like his older brother Tua, he was lights out. He played some his freshman year, as he mostly utilized his athleticism, but still wowed with his arm with a quick release. As a true freshman, he threw for 2,700 yards, and there was still plenty of room for him to grow. But he didn't do it alone, as he sort of had a mentor while he was there, as former NCAA and NFL head coach June Jones decided to join the staff in 2016 to be the offensive coordinator. He wanted to coach up Talia, and his dad was the former OC, but he was happy to step aside and watch his son play instead of coach for once. Under Jones, Talia would completely go off, throwing for nearly 4,000 yards as a sophomore and was just 66 yards shy of the Hawaii high school record. After that, Jones left to coach the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the Canadian Football League, but he would still stay in contact with Talia. Jones said, quote, He has the instincts and the accuracy of all the great ones. Eventually, though, they would decide to move to the States, as they would go to Thompson High School in Alabama in 2017. While he was there, he passed for 3,800 yards and 36 touchdowns and led his team to a 12-1 season. He was named the Polynesian High School Football Player of the Year and a first-team All-State selection. By this time, because of him and his brother, many schools had interest in him. Most of the SEC had offered him by the end of his junior season, as he had offers from Florida, Tennessee, LSU, Nebraska, Michigan, and Oregon, but Alabama had been the first Power 5 team to offer him, and that would happen back in 2016, and for multiple factors, that was going to be the number one school. He eventually decided to commit to the Crimson Tide in 2018, and as a senior, he continued to play well. He became the only quarterback in Alabama high school football history to throw for at least four 400-yard games in his career, and was the 10th player in state history to throw for 500 yards in a game. He led the team to the 7A state championship, which they would lose, but he still managed to have a phenomenal season. In his total career, he had over 120 touchdowns and 12,000 yards in four seasons. This was better than his older brother, and scouts really weren't deterred by the fact he was only 5'11". Some thought he could be even better than Tua. According to 24-7 Sports, he was considered a four-star recruit, a top 200 player, and the fourth best pro-style quarterback in the class of 2019. He decided to graduate early and enroll early at Bama, and would practice for them in the 2019 season. So how would he do while he was there? Well, he came into the program with a lot of hype, especially considering his brother was the starting quarterback in 2019. Jalen Hurts had just left for Oklahoma, so now that starting role was Tua's. The other freshman quarterback on the roster, Lane Hatcher, had just left for Arkansas State, so when Tua went down with an injury, it was going to come down to him and Mac Jones. Jones would end up winning the job, and from there, Talia saw the writing on the wall. His dad said, quote, He was told he was going to come in and compete, and he really didn't get that opportunity, so he wanted to use the spring to do that. But with everything going on in the world, he didn't really have an opportunity to compete, so he decided to transfer. Already end up transferring, well, he would follow Mike Loxley to Maryland, and this got an immediate amount of hype. At Maryland, Talia would be coached by his former OC at Bama, Mike Loxley, obviously, and while it was a fresh start, it was now out of the SEC, as they obviously played in the Big Ten. He was officially a sophomore since he played five games at Bama the year before, but he was still named the team starter for the shortened 2020 season. In that year, he threw for just over 1,000 yards with seven touchdowns and seven picks. While it doesn't really seem that good, he did lead the entire Big Ten conference in yards per completion and was second in passing efficiency and yards per attempt. Still, those seven interceptions hurt, and they ended up going 2-3 and three as a team. His second year in 2021, he would improve. 
He threw for 3,800 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions, and he'd lead Maryland to a bowl game with a 7-6 record. The Terps had spent a long time looking for consistency at the quarterback position, and Talia was now settling in. In the 10 years before Talia, 11 quarterbacks had started at least one game for Maryland, and only 8 of them had started at least 7 games. In 2022, Talia would prove his consistency as he once again threw for over 3,000 yards with 18 touchdowns and 8 picks but they'd only really improve a little bit as they went 8-5 before defeating NC State in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. This became the first back-to-back -back winning season since 2003, and Talia would use his final year of eligibility to come back in 2023. This would be his last season, and he once again went over the 3,000-yard mark. He threw for 3,377 yards with 25 touchdowns and 11 picks. Because of all the time he got to play, he set the Big Ten record for career passing yards, and that would come after a 298-yard performance against Rutgers. He ended up beating out Curtis Painter for that role, and in total, he finished with 11,193 yards. After his senior season was over, he looked for an eligibility waiver to enter the portal and find one more school, and even Nick Saban offered support, but they would end up denying it. Instead, he would now have to declare for a very, very stacked 2024 NFL Draft class, and he would sit out the bowl game to prepare for the future. As I said, his waiver would end up getting denied, and now he's trying to find his role in this year's QB class. He definitely was an extremely good quarterback for Maryland over the years, but in my opinion, he really didn't win that many big games, and I was never really wowed by him. The rumors claim that there was at one point a $1.5 million NIL offer, and that was for him to transfer to an SEC school, but that would not end up happening. So in terms of the NFL, what's going to happen here? Well, if you go way back in time, it really did seem like Talia could find his way to the NFL. Sadly, he never ended up growing much, as June Jones thought he'd get to about 6'2 or 6'3, and that was going to hurt him. Still though, he did remain an excellent passer once he got to Maryland, only throwing 37 interceptions compared to 76 touchdowns in his career. But despite his excellent numbers, there are a handful of factors that are hurting his capabilities of even being drafted or drafted that high. The first one is obviously his size. Despite players like Kyler Murray and Bryce Young proving you can be short and go first overall if you have the talent, Talia just did not have the career that those two had. Kyler's unbelievable athleticism and Bryce's accuracy are two things that Talia doesn't have. Talia is mobile, but he's not a phenomenal athlete by any means, and he just doesn't have the arm strength or the accuracy to be a franchise quarterback right now. Other than his lack of size, arm strength, and top end speed, he also falls short in consistency. His quick release that intrigues so many college scouts has been offset by hitches in his throwing motion, and a lot of times he has a lot of panic throws or dumb decisions. He's been told to have a tendency to completely panic once a play breaks down, and that can have catastrophic effects in the NFL. Honestly, if he's even drafted, it will be later. I'm talking the 6th or 7th round. Honestly, that'll be because he's a good but not great player who has an excellent football mind and is related to a really good starter in the NFL. Most scouts were pretty disappointed with his pro day at Maryland, but are still intrigued by how well he interviewed. He should be a long-term backup in the NFL, and even if the concept of the two Tungavaloa brothers playing in the same NFL game isn't very likely, maybe it will happen one day. Honestly, there's one more thing I'll add in, as I just never really thought he had that it factor. Maryland never really played in that many high-profile games, he didn't have many major wins on his resume, and it seemed at times he just put up big numbers against bad teams and never actually improved the overall team. I don't know though, that's just my opinion. I'm definitely not trying to be a hater, as I really did enjoy Talia and followed him closely coming out of high school, but I just don't know if the NFL is really in his future. But again, what do I know? This is definitely going to be interesting to watch, and he'll probably get taken in that 6th or 7th round. But what do you guys think? If you're a Bama or Maryland fan, what went wrong for Talia? Where do you think he'll get drafted? And who's another quarterback or prospect I should take a look at next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.